الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على تمان الأكملان على محمد رسول الله سيد الأولين والآخرين وإمام الأنبياء والمرسلين والشافع المشفع يوم الدين وعلى آله الطيبين وأزواجه الطاهرات أمهات المؤمنين وصحابته الغر الميامين وبالأخص منهم خلفائه الأربعة الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي ومن استنى بسنته محتدى بهديهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Hayyakum Allah, dear brothers and sisters who are attending here and who are following this conference through the internet. May Allah Ta'ala make our gatherings for the sake of His. May Allah Ta'ala make us all of those who are given the mercy because of such gatherings. And may Allah Ta'ala reward you first of all for coming, attending, willing to get the benefit of what is going to be uh, said. And as Brother Hafiz Naim said that uh, and as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, مَنْ لَا يَشْكُرِ النَّاسَ لَا يَشْكُرِ اللَّهِ The one who is not grateful to the people of what they do of goodness, then he would not be grateful to his Lord, to Allah. And that's why we say, may Allah Ta'ala highly reward those who were behind this type of event from those who are organizing it and those who are advertising it and those who uh, even come and attend it. The topic selected to be the main topic of this conference is a very important topic. One reason why it is important is what Brother Habib Naim Jazallah Khair recited of the ayah of Surah uh, Al Ahzab where Allah Ta'ala said, Lakad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasana liman kana yarju Allah wal yawm al akhir wa dhakar Allah kathira. You are given a good example. And the messenger of Allah, meaning Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa for those who wish to be successful on the day of resurrection, who wish to stand before Allah gaining his pleasure and be successful on that day. And that is, of course, the wish and hope of every single mankind whatsoever he is upon, whether Muslim or non-Muslim. Everyone wants to be on the day of resurrection, gaining the pleasure of Allah, protected from the punishment of Allah, allowed to enter the paradise of Allah. That's a wish of everyone. It is a wish even of the shaitan. Because no one would like to be in the fire. But he whom Allah Ta'ala guides is the one who is guided. And he whom Allah Ta'ala does not guide does not give him guidance, is the one who is misguided. So that's why, besides seeking guidance from Allah, we need to work for it. We need to work for it. 
one main thing to do in order to gain the guidance from Allah Ta'ala is to follow this messenger that he Allah Ta'ala sent amongst you. And Allah Ta'ala said as in Surah Al-Anbiya, Ayah 107, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ we have sent you not, but as a mercy to the whole universes, to the whole worlds. We need to concentrate on this ayah. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Was he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a rahmah? In his 23 years of prophethood, was he a rahmah? Was he a mercy? Because Allah Ta'ala said that. And Allah never says false. Allah never speaks the false. He told us, he told all mankind that he sent Muhammad Sallallahu to be the mercy to the whole universes to the whole universes. To know the status of Rasulullah Sallallahu think of this ayah. If someone gives you a hand, a help, when your car is broken on the motorway, how much respect you give this man? How much respect you give to this man? If someone gave you a hand and rescued you when you were drowning in the sea, how much respect do you give to this man? And how much respect do you give to, the, to your parents? Why? Because they were the cause of you being here and they helped you when they raised you up. You still have high respect to them because of that. Now imagine the man who is the cause of mercy to you in this world and in the hereafter. How much respect you should give to him? How much? And that is the question that everyone who says Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهِ needs to learn. He needs to learn. And he needs to be honest with it. He needs to stand firm on it. The status of Muhammad Sallallahu is clarified in the Quran before anything else. Allah Ta'ala said as in Surah At-Tawbah, Ayah 128, Allah Ta'ala said, مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَخَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ uh, In Surah Al-Ahzab, in Surah Al-Ahzab, Ayah 40. مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَخَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ Muhammad is not a, the father of any of your men. But he is the messenger of Allah and the soul of the prophets. We want to stop by this ayah for a while. مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ If your father is a person like Muhammad Sallallahu How will you feel? If your father is a person like Muhammad Sallallahu even before the prophethood, because Muhammad Sallallahu 
in Mecca was known as As-Sadiq Al-Amin even before he become a prophet <coughs> he was someone who never lies he was someone who never cheats he was someone who's always kind to everyone and when he was given the prophethood he was purified even more as we all know that the revelation itself is a matter of purification for those who follow it what about those what about that man who received it and acted upon it the best and spread it as Allah Ta'ala said in the Quran that he Allah Ta'ala send the revelation down to Muhammad Sallallahu to purify you to purify you so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the best man ever known in all of his different sides of life so ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله look at this ولكن رسول الله but the messenger of Allah the messenger of Allah ولكن رسول الله look at this position the messenger of Allah the messenger of Allah today today in these days the messenger, the messenger is the one who sent with the message, isn't it? If today a messenger sent with a president, a king, an emir, how much respect should he be given? How much respect? High respect. What about it when it is the messenger of the king of kings, the lord? Allah Ta'ala and not only that but the messenger of Allah is only sent as a mercy from Allah to those who this messenger is sent to above all that Allah Ta'ala is mentioning something very important in this ayah وَخَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ Why would Allah Ta'ala inform us that he is the seal of all the prophets? To make you know that no more mercy is coming other than this messenger. So if you don't get it, you lose it. To make you know that as he the seal, no more revelation will come to you. If you don't get use of this revelation, if you don't get use of this mercy that is sent to you, which is Muhammad Sallallahu then you are losing all types of mercy. All types of mercy. And that is why, as my brother Habib Naim was saying in his short, uh, intensive talk, that... If any prophet, not only the two he mentioned, Musa and Isa, and they are from Ul al Azm, but if any prophet is alive today or at the time of Rasulullah, he would not have any choice other than following Rasulullah. Because he's the only messenger who was sent to all mankind. As he said, every messenger was sent to his people, especially, except for I, I was sent for all mankind and Jinn. Ibrahim السلام, was known by Abu Al-Anbiya. His nephew, Lut, 
was sent at his time. Ibrahim was in Palestine and Lot was sent to Jordan. But Muhammad وسلم, was sent, as he said, to the red and black, meaning to all mankind. To all mankind. As what? As a killer? As they say? No. No. If Muhammad وسلم, was a killer or who or he loved to kill, he would not tell Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu when they were at the battle of Tabuk, sorry, the battle of uh, uh, Khaybar, Isa sallam said to Ali when he went to fight the Yahud, the Yahud of Khaybar broke all the oaths that they had with Rasulullah sallam. Broke all the covenants that they had with Rasulullah. But Rasulullah, when he came to near to their land, he sent Ali with a group of Sahaba ready to fight, ready to kill. But Rasulullah was encouraging Ali not to start with killing. And he said to him, if you come to their land, let first thing you do is to call them to la ilaha illallah. Not to kill them, not to fight, but to call them to la ilaha illallah. Or first, sorry, first he said to him, you go slowly. Why? Because when the army march slowly, people hear. The nearest villages will hear and they will send someone to inform the next village and the next village will inform the next village so everybody get ready and protect themselves. So Rasulullah is telling Ali, go slowly, don't go fast. Don't sadden them. Don't sadden them. Let them take some time to think, okay, let us now go back to peace. And over that he said to him, and when you come to their land, the first thing you begin with be calling them to la ilaha illallah. <coughs> and then he encouraged them more over that and he said, look Ali, if Allah Ta'ala would bring one person to Islam through you, this would be better for you than Humur al-Ni'am. Humur al-Ni'am is uh, the red color camels that very rarely can be found and that itself to the Arabs is more more important than Rolls Royce to you guys today and they they buy them until today they buy them with high high prices so Rasulullah sallallahu is calling Ali to what? To mercy, to peace, not to killing and fighting. Killing in Islam, the sword in Islam is like the, is like the, uh, the, the, the knife or the uh, blade of the surgeon in the hospital. He uses it to cut the skin, not to harm you, but to treat you, to help you. Sword in Islam is not used to destroy. No, that's not correct. And it is not correct that Islam was spreaded by sword. No, that's not, that's not correct. Medina, for example, the first Muslim territory was never, was never conquered by sword. <coughs> Even when he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, came on the eighth year of Hijrah to, to Mecca to conquer it, after all what the Makkah people have done, 
with him and his companions. After all of what they've done, he came. And you know what? He did not go to Mecca direct, but he came a bit far from Mecca and he sent someone to bring Abu Sufyan, the mayor of Mecca at that time. He was kafir at that time. He sent him to come. He, he told that messenger, it was Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, his uncle, radiallahu anhu. He told him to bring him and make him, uh, and, and make him climb the highest mountain in the area to watch the, the tribes of Arabs coming in groups, every tribe carrying a flag, all fighters ready to fight. And this was only to, uh, not to terror uh, Abu Sufyan, more than it to make him think twice that war and fighting is not good. Let's go for peace. So Rasulullah was, he did not look for killing. He came in 12, uh, nearly about uh, uh, 10,000 fighters. He could have demolished Mecca. But he said no. And after that, he sent a messenger to Mecca, calling everybody, whoever enters his house and locks his door, he is safe. Whoever enters the house of Allah is safe. Whoever enters the house of Abu Sufyan, who was kafir, but he is the mayor of Mecca, the mayor of Mecca, is safe. Look at that. Is safe too. So when he came and entered Mecca, he heard one of the Muslims saying, Al yawma yawm al malhama. Today is the day of cutting the flesh, the meat of people, the flesh, killing. He looked at him and he said, No, Al yawma yawm al marhama. Today is the day of mercy. Mercy with whom? With those who accused him and killed his companions and did what they did. The examples are many, Ikhwan, in showing that he was the mercy sent by Allah to all universes. So he is the Khatam al Nabiin, the seal of the prophets. And everybody wants to have the mercy, there is an easy way for it. If you want to have mercy in this world and in the hereafter, there is an easy way for it. Go on the way of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In all of your life, I don't mean go on his way only on your aqidah, on your creed and belief. La, but your aqidah. Your worship have to adhere the way of Rasulullah. Your manners, your characters, your dealing with others. Because you have many people today claim that they are up on the Sunnah and they fight with others because they are not up on the Sunnah in how they pray. Maybe they fight with someone on moving the hand, the finger, and the shahud. But yet, he is too rough with his family. He might bunch his wife. Subhanallah, is this the sunnah? Are you on the sunnah? Do you understand what is sunnah? Do you know what is sunnah? He might fight with you on which mosque you go to, but he chases people away from the sunnah because of his harshness. Is this person on the sunnah? Is the sunnah a matter of choice? You choose from it what you like? La. Sunnah is to take it all. You cannot choose what you like from the sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu You have to be upon the sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu in your aqidah, in your ibadah, in your business, 
in your relationships, in your teachings, in your whatsoever, yani all of the life, all of your life has to be upon the way of Muhammad Sallallahu Not only men, men and women. He was not sent as an example for men alone, but for men and women. We all have to be upon the way of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Ta'ala also said as in Surah Tawbah 128, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ لَا آيَةِ اللَّهِ لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ Look at this ayah. Now has come unto you a messenger from amongst yourselves. Why did Allah mention yourselves, who they were? The people of Mecca. People of Mecca were upon very good manners and characters. They were known that they were people of manners and characters. But again, they have other bad manners and characters. One main bad thing that they used to worship idols and they have other things, but amongst the creation, amongst mankind at that time, they were the best. That's why Allah Ta'ala selected Muhammad Sallallahu to be from the best tribe of mankind. As he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. As he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah Ta'ala choosing him from Quraysh and Quraysh from He's choosing him from Bani Hashim, and he's choosing from Bani Hashim from Quraysh, and he's choosing Quraysh from Kinana, and uh, choosing Kinana from the uh, children of uh, Ismail and the like. And that's why he وسلم, said, "Inna bu'ithtu li utammima salih al-akhlaq." Another hadith, "Makarim al-akhlaq." I was sent to complete to complete the perfection of the manners and character. That means there were manners and characters which were known, yani beautiful, but he وسلم, was sent to bring more beautiful and beautify it more better. So Allah Ta'ala is saying, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ It's not a stranger to you. You know him very well. He is in other uh, recitation, other qira'ah, min anfasikum. Min anfasikum, meaning the best of you. Allah Ta'ala has sent to you one of the best of you. And uh, lineage and in manners and characters on every side. So, azizun alayhi ma'anittum. It grieves him that you should perish. Harisun alaykum. Harisun alaykum. Urgently anxious is he over you. Meaning, he would always love to see you in the best situation. In the best cases. Of dunya and akhirah. But what is the best uh, situations and cases of dunya? This is different from one person to other. Some people think that the best uh, situation in dunya is to be rich. If it is, why wouldn't he be rich? He wasn't rich. He wasn't rich. It's not because he could not be rich. La. But because he did not want to be rich. He did not want to be rich. And some others think that, may think that the, uh, the uh, best case and situation of life is to have power. But look at him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
although he, he had the power, but it, it wasn't seen on him. He was so merciful. To limit that, as the Sahabi said, that a woman might come and grab Rasulullah from his clothes to the side of road and speak to him about her needs. And he never hesitated, never said nothing. He had the power, and a man from the Yahud called Zayd ibn Sa'na came to him and grabbed him from his clothes like this. Because Rasulullah borrowed some money from Zayd ibn Sa'na, the Jew, to a, a certain period. And before that time comes, that man came. And he grabbed Rasulullah from his clothes, saying, Give me my money, O Muhammad, because you people or children of Abdul Muttalib are people who deny the loans and debts. He knows that this is not correct, but there is a reason behind that. A noble reason. Umar radiallahu anhu was there. And we all know Umar. He said, you do that with Rasulullah while I watch? By Allah, I'll break your neck. But Rasulullah told him, oh Umar, we are, in need, we are not in need for this. He is in need to guide him to the best way to claim his money. And I am in need to guide me, to advise me, to advise me to return the debt back, the loan back to him in a good way. Subhanallah. Yahudi. He's from the Yahud. He's not Muslim. Another man from the Munafiqeen came and said, Ya Rasulullah, he said, Ya Muhammad, i'dil, fa inna qismatun ma urida biha wa jalla. When he, when he was distributing the captives of Hunayn after conquering Makkah, meaning now he is very powerful. The, all, all the Arabian pronouns are now under him. He could have killed him. But he said, when Umar said, let me to kill this munafiq, Rasulullah said to him, no, I don't want people to speak saying Muhammad kills his people. Look at that. Who can do that today? Who can do that today? بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَعُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ To the believers, is he most kind and, and merciful? And merciful. And Allah Ta'ala said as in Surah An-Nur, Ayah 63, to show you the status of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. لَا تَجْعَلُوا دُعَاءَ الرَّسُولِ كَدُعَاءِ بَعْضِكُمْ بَعْضًا كَدُعَاءِ بَعْضِكُمْ بَعْضًا Deem not the summons of the messenger amongst yourselves like the summons of one of you to another. And this means you have to respect Rasulullah. And that's why when Umar ibn Khattab at his time when he was the Khalifa, he found two men speaking loudly in the masjid of Rasulullah. He called him, he said, where are you from? They mentioned some remote area, not in Medina, other town. He said, by Allah, if you were from amongst the people of Medina, I would have beaten you. But because you don't know the rulings, we will yani, forgive you this time and teach you. Just talking, talking in Masjid al-Nabawi, next to his grave, because his grave is in his house, which was uh, adjacent to the uh, the mosque of the Prophet ﷺ. to that limit you don't raise your voice at there that is how Abu Sufyan before Islam before he became Muslim he came to Rasulullah to negotiate and then he returned back to Mecca and he told the people of Mecca by Allah I came to you I came back from where I saw people love Muhammad not like anyone on this world can love anybody, anyone. He never spit a, and he never spits except that 
it comes into the hands of one of them and he wipe it over his face because of the love of Rasulullah because of the love of Rasulullah so to know the status of Rasulullah you need to know two things as a conclusion because I think we are hitting the time otherwise the material is much more. The first one is how to have the mercy on this world. And, how, and the second is how to have the mercy on the hereafter. And to, to, to know that, you need first of all to understand the, the meaning of mercy. What is mercy? What is mercy? That is very important. To understand it. So the first is to be up on the way of Rasulullah Sallallahu To be up on the way of Rasulullah Sallallahu in all of your life. Not only on one than the other, one side than the other, but in all of your wife. If you cannot, then you have to know that you are not having mercy. You are not having mercy. If you cannot follow Rasulullah Sallallahu then you have to know that you are not having mercy. Because, Ya Khwan, when this ayah was descended to Rasulullah Sallallahu لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةَ لِلْعَالَمِينَ Was it before prophethood, prophethood or after prophethood? Akhwa. Was this ayah before the prophethood or after the prophethood? There was no ayah revealed before prophethood. Because prophethood means receiving revelation. So, now, he was sent. Sent with what? Sent with mercy. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ The existence of Rasulullah Sallallahu itself was a mercy. And the religion that he was sent with is the mercy. As Allah Ta'ala said in the other ayah, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ So, Allah Ta'ala told us now, يُعَذِّبَهُمْ يُعَذِّبْ is the adab, the punishment, the torchment. Isn't it opposite of mercy? That is the thing opposite of mercy. Torchment, punishment, difficulties. يعني forget about difficulties, but... Punishment is the opposite thing of mercy. Now Allah Ta'ala told us in this ayah that the existence of Muhammad Sallallahu is a cause of them not receiving any punishment as long as he's alive amongst them. But when he passed away Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the mercy raised? No. No, it wasn't raised. It wasn't raised. One source of it was raised, but the other is still there. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ means what? Seek forgiveness. Seek forgiveness is what? Seeking forgiveness is what? Is worship. And worship is what? Worship is the religion that Muhammad Sallallahu sent with. So it means if you hold the religion of Muhammad Sallallahu you will still have the mercy. And the religion is everything that he Sallallahu came with. Everything that he Sallallahu came with. Manners, characters, worship, belief, etc, etc. All of that called religion. Worship. You worship Allah by bowing and prostrating. Performing the five time prayers, you worship Allah by raising your heart and subligate. You worship Allah by fasting, you worship Allah by 
performing Hajj, you worship Allah by giving out the obligatory zakah. You worship Allah by uh, being uh, grateful to your parents. You worship Allah by uh, helping people who need to be helped. You worship Allah by all of these good things. And that's why Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, when he identified or when he defined the, when he defined the um, uh, ibadah, he said, Ismun jami'un li kulli ma yuhibbuhu Allahu wa yardah min al-aqwali wal-a'mal al-zahirati wal-batin. The worship, the ibadah is a name given to everything that Allah Ta'ala likes from the sayings and actions, the hidden and apparent. So if you want the mercy, follow Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As'alullah bi man yu'karamih an yarzuqani wa iyaakum husna attiba'i nabiyyina Muhammadin Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa an yarzuqana wa iyaakum shafa'atahu yawm al-deen wa suhbatahu bi jannat al-na'im. والله أعلم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه